All right, I want to make another quick video where we are having a prefab that needs to find a reference to another object really quickly. And this is common for, let's say we're, we're in a game situation where we have a projectile that ha does not have a reference to an object in the scene, but as soon as it enters the scene, we want it to be able to find an object or a class, a script, to be able to update a certain value within that script. And we know that prefabs inherently cannot hold that reference since they are not part of the scene as the scene necessarily starts. So how do we do that easily? I'll, in this demo, we'll do this really quickly and I want to be able to show you um, three methods that are quick and easy but not necessarily the most efficient. Depending on what your situation is, uh, you might use one or the other two. I mean, there's plenty of other ways that you can do this, but in in the cases that I'm giving you an example of, I find number one is to probably the most easy way to get things started. Note that in this method, I'm, I only have one single instance of, a, of this class that I'm using, and so you will have different returns if you have more than one existing object, in, and you'll see what I mean. I want to be able to keep track of how many times I shoot and destroy these asteroids, and these asteroids are prefabs, but that doesn't really matter right now. But also the projectile that I'm shooting is also a prefab. And so I'm not using object pooling right now, so I'm instantiating these every time I hit spacebar. And so these objects do not have a reference to uh, this manager object that is keeping track of how many items are getting destroyed. So let me give you quickly a rundown of what's happening here because your setup is probably different than mine at the heart of it. The thing that I'm talking about is um, find object of type. So we have my Mario character, and Mario is going to spit hot fire. It's shooting this heart projectile. Let's quickly look at this script. I have a game object projectile, and I have a certain shoot point that the projectile is getting instantiated from. Uh, as soon as it gets Instantiated, I'm addressing its rigid body and giving it a certain speed velocity. So whenever I hit spacebar, then I'm just spawning my projectile. You probably have a situation that looks similar to this. It doesn't really matter in this situation how you're doing this. Um, the nitty gritty of my example is that every time that my projectile hits an object tagged asteroid, I'm telling the asteroid to be destroyed as well as the projectile. So the last part of it is when this asteroid gets destroyed I want to I want to be able to increase a certain value that's stored on a different object a class or a script that lives somewhere else in the scene. So I have this class script that's called collectibles tracker and it only holds a one singular integer value and then I have two public methods. One is Increase collectible count, in which when this is called, it just takes the the current value of num collectibles and increases it by one. Another method that's publicly accessible is get count, and I'm using this for my UI manager to grab the value of the current count so that it can be displayed. So this script is sitting on a third object, third party object, and I'm just setting it in my manager. I have this manager object that's not part of the prefab, the projectile prefab that I'm using, and it's sitting here. It does is not aware of any of the prefabs when the scene starts, and so what does the prefab do when it spawns or when I hit spacebar? When I fire this, then each projectile or prefab is calling from within its projectile script that I created. You can call it whatever you want. It's doing, uh, no, no, sorry, my asteroid is doing this. The asteroids are also getting spawned. The asteroids, when they enter the scene at start, are calling this game or find object of type, and it's looking for the class of my collectibles tracker, the one that is holding that singular integer data type that uh, value that's increasing every time that this gets called. And so this asteroid, every time it gets instantiated in the scene is calling find object of type and is caching that reference 
that's calling counter here at start. So on destroyed, this is a unity method um, which occurs when the asteroid gets destroyed. We know that when the projectile hits it, we're calling the other game object. In this case, it's the asteroid. It's calling the on destroy method. And when that happens, right before uh, the garbage collection happens, it's telling the class collectibles tracker to call its method increase collectible count. So when it gets destroyed, it's calling this method, and we know that what that does is in here, it increases the num collectibles value by one. That's pretty much it. That's the, the straightforward of it. Um, let's see. Give you an example. Let's hit play. Not very good at this. See this count increasing every time that the hearts hits it. Um, just to give you a, a peek at what's going on here in this manager, I have this UI manager that is also keeping track of the collectibles tracker and it's just grabbing the value from the get count which is publicly accessible here it's grabbing that value turning it into a string and then displaying it in the UI text so when this happens um, yeah it should be just increasing that value every time the asteroid gets destroyed The other two ways that I mentioned here are uh, we could also find the game object that holds the script. This adds a few lines of text. It does a very similar way. So let's just back up and go to look at that. I'm going to uh, find my folder that has all my stuff. Assets. Video demo. In my projectiles, I'll look at my projectile script and let's just change the method that we're in the asteroid script sorry in the asteroid script I'm just going to change the find object and rather than doing it this way we're going to use what I mentioned here in this we're going to use the game object find and this is kind of this is a little bit slower we're getting that reference and we're using game object find in this case we need to know the name of the object that is holding the script collectibles tracker and the name of the object is called manager. So we'll look at, we'll find the manager object, and then we're going to use the get component and grab the collectibles tracker instance here. Then we can still call that public method of increase collectible count. Save that. Doesn't like it. Ooh, let's see what's going on. Reference of objects not set to an instance of an object. Uh, okay. I spelled manager wrong. So I spelled manger. Uh, that's one of the downsides of using string comparison. So this method is looking for this manager object by name, and then when it finds it, then it's looking for the script associated with it, and then increasing that value. So that way it works. That's okay. And then this third one is a static instance reference. So we could have our collectibles tracker be able to have its own public static reference to itself. So we could call it like this public static collectibles tracker and maybe we'll call it instance like that and then at its own awake we are going to set the reference to ourselves like this and of course the all these all these demos only work for when there's a singular instance in your scene. If you have more than one instance of this collectibles tracker, everything's going to go berserk and it's not going to work. So keep that in mind. So come back back over here. 
um, we would change this from game object dot find to we'd go to collectibles tracker dot instance and we don't need to use a find or a search or anything like that since it's publicly static and then we could just still in call the increase collectible count firing there it is so this third method also works great hope this helps have a great day